we knew that the deep sea corals in Alaska and along the Aleutian were 100% different from those from the Hawaiian Ridge. We came on this expedition to look for a boundary in the ocean. It's very difficult to be able to get access to see what's down there and also to be able to sample down there. So we can take these beautiful high definition cameras, a remotely operated vehicle with manipulator arms so we can be much more careful about what we're sampling, how we're sampling, and be more respectful of the environment. Each dive that we've had, we've been surprised at what we've seen at the bottom. One of my favorite things that we came across was this giant sponge. This one looked like a giant horn or tuba, and it um, kind of blew my mind. I couldn't even get it past the phylum of periphera. Where we had the purple octocoral that none of us could even place to family. This one we're like, it's an octocoral. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of the most exciting one where you find that, that individual that you just go, what is this? We got to uh, this beautiful coral garden with these massive bubblegum corals growing near the top. But what was really interesting about it was all around the bottoms of them were all these urchins seemingly waiting for these corals to topple over so that they could feed on them. And then another place there were thousands of feather stars covering the bottom. We saw a bamboo coral that was really unusual in that it wasn't very stiff, it was flopping around. <laughs> and uh, bamboos usually have very rigid skeletons, so, so something's unusual about that. We try to then look at what are we seeing most down there, and those are the ones that we want to try to get samples of so that we can have physical, what we call voucher specimens. And once the ROV team has given us the clear, we will go and pick out the samples and we bring them into the wet lab where we process them. First photographing the sample as fresh as it is, and then transferring it for multiple different genetics projects going on at the moment. I think we can say that the dominant members of the communities that we have been seeing are reflective of the northern communities. So the question is, are we gonna to start to see even more diversity, bigger colonies, um, or will we see a broader um, transition zone. So we don't have really concrete answers yet. Um, I think we're going to see a boundary though. The shape of the seafloor affects how water moves over it and that impacts what animals are going to live there. The environment, the topography, and how much food is falling down all makes a difference to what can live there and what does live there. Finding that there is probably some kind of boundary to the distributions of these animals gets us a better idea of how recruitment works, how species dis are distributed, um, what could be driving where they are, and then with those kinds of models we can give better recommendations for protections.